A lot of games force a lot of stuff on you. The story calls for events, right? Well, sometimes a smooth tongue can avoid the worst. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 games where you can talk your way out of anything. At number 10 is Deus Ex Human Revolution. The Deus Ex series is renowned for a level of freedom that they give players, you know, to do everything in the game. But in the original game, there actually weren't a lot of opportunities to talk your way out of a situation. If you wanted to be non-violent in that game, your options were usually just avoid encounters and try to end things using non-lethal weapons. Human Revolution expanded those options significantly. Uh, they gave players more ways to resolve problems socially rather than just with violence or subterfuge. And these new dialogue challenges made it so that some of the most climactic events of the game could basically boil down to conversations. They're like boss battles where you're fighting not with weapons but with words. You know, not as cool. <laughs> no, I'm joking. These are actually really fun. Your refusal to help me is getting in the way of justice. Wait, wait. I never meant to imply that I wasn't interested in seeing justice done. I mean, there's obviously also still regular boss battles, and there's a lot of combat in the game that's mostly unavoidable, so it's not a perfect example, but there's large chunks of the game where you can literally just use the right dialogue choices, and it'll reward you for taking the non-lethal option over a violent one as well. And number nine is the Hitman World of Assassination Trilogy. It's not an RPG and there's no dialogue options, but when you think about it, talking is a massive part of the Hitman series, especially the recent trilogy, and really lets Agent 47 practice his gift to gab. There's a lot of situations where your best option to get close to a target involves talking, and a lot of the time, these are also the most amusing opportunities in the game. Like the bank mission where you pretend to be a new employee, or the suburbs level where you pretend to be a realtor. There's even an entire level about literally just talking, the murder mystery house from Hitman 3. In that stage, most of your opportunities to take out your target involve pretending to be a private detective. Anytime Agent 47 gets to talk in these games is fun, every line from the guy is, is just dripping with deadpan humor. Follow you to the bathroom. Drown you. Terrible accident. Gruesome. Talking your way to a target is hardly the only way to finish a mission in a Hitman game, but a lot of the time it's easily the funniest. And number eight is Fallout 1, 2 in New Vegas. Uh, let's just lump all the Black Island Obsidian Fallout games together for this one, because they're all about that. The first two Fallout games are especially good for letting you talk your way out of a situation, but New Vegas is no slouch either. They're not games where you can avoid every single instance of combat, but there's a lot of situations where combat can be avoided just by picking words correctly. Comparing all three, New Vegas is probably the worst about it, but it's still better than the Bethesda developed Fallout games. They're there's a lot of unavoidable combat in New Vegas, but if you invest your social skills, it's gonna pay off. The original Fallout games are some of the best when it comes to talking your way out of a problem, though. I mean, in the first game alone, you can talk your way into the bad guy's main base, talk your way past multiple levels of guards, and even talk the bad guy himself out of his evil scheme. Like, you can basically get through the entire final dungeon without getting into any combat. It's tricky, but it's possible. Those original games do look pretty crude by today's standards, but if you're willing to get past that, the amount of options you're given for actual role-playing are still some of the best in the business. And number seven is Disco Elysium. This one's a bit of a cheat because the vast majority of the options you get for talking rather than combat, so like, yeah. But still, this weird as hell detective RPG puts you into the head of a cop waking up after a huge bender. Uh, there's voices in his head telling him what to do, and even basic actions like getting a tie off of a ceiling fan can be just disastrous. It's a game where you're not taking damage from getting shot or beaten up, at least most of the time. You're more likely to get hurt trying to climb a tree or failing a conversation check, and then you're killed in a violent conflict. It's a game where you can potentially talk your way out of a tough situation, but you're as likely to make things worse with your talking. Sometimes your big mouth's more likely to get you killed than to help you. Believe me, I know all about that. Huh. I mean, I'm obviously not dead, but uh, I've... Mm, we don't need to talk about that right now. Uh, Disco Elysium, though, it's a pretty unusual and interesting game that I think deserves all the attention it gets. And while it's not exactly in the spirit of the list because it doesn't have a lot of combat mechanics, it's still an RPG, you can still get killed, and you can still talk your way out of it. In fact, it's usually the correct option.
And number six is Undertale. This indie favorite is, uh, you know, well known at this point, but it's worth mentioning for a list like this because it's one of the few JRPG inspired games that lets you get through without, you know, throwing a single punch, much less uh, other things. Known for its tagline of the friendly RPG where nobody has to die, this game gives you the option of sparing enemies in combat rather than killing them. That's the feature that makes this game really stand out. It's possible to go through the entire game without killing anyone, not even the bosses. You do have the option to fight them normally, but if you'd rather show mercy, that's available. If you're a genocidal freak, there is an actual, you know, genocide run option. Kill everything, why not? But uh, to spare enemies, you have to do something to make them like you, which is sometimes simple, but sometimes involves solving a small puzzle using the act command. It sounds basic, but the game does a lot to mix these things up, and every single enemy has their own unique methods to tame them, I guess. In most games, you talk to avoid combat. Well, in Undertale, you talk to end a fight that's already started, which is kind of weird, but like it also makes perfect sense in the context of the game. And it's great. Honestly, it's really an interesting way of handling combat. And there's nothing else quite like it. And number five is Shadowrun Hong Kong. The recent trilogy of Shadowrun games by Hairbrain Schemes started off pretty light on the RPG mechanics. In the first game, Shadowrun Returns, you're pretty much just doing a linear selection of missions with a lot of combat, but the third game, Shadowrun Hong Kong, the social skills are almost as powerful as the combat ones. This isn't a game where combat's completely avoidable, per se, but there's a lot you can do to avoid with the proper application of social skills. Most missions can be completed without having to fight a shot. Not all of them. Most, though. That seems a, a bit like it might make the game a little too simple, but keep in mind there's like a lot of social skills in this game, so you really have to invest in them if you want to talk your way through a lot of these missions, and when combat becomes unavoidable, you're kind of at a serious disadvantage for focusing on that. Still, for what's a fairly small RPG, the amount of dialogue options and different ways the game gives you to talk your way out of combat, really impressive. And number four is Planescape Torment. This absolute classic from 1999 is one of the most unusual and thought-provoking RPGs of all time. There's a good reason it is highly regarded for its writing. Now, the combat isn't quite as well-liked, but that's okay, because if you play your cards right, you really don't have to do combat at all. Almost every single plot-critical combat encounter can be avoided, either through stealth or by saying the right things. As far as I can tell, there's really only like two or four characters total you absolutely have to fight, and even then you don't have have to kill them if you don't want to. This game was a major inspiration for Disco Elysium, because most of the story is told through dialogue rather than fighting, and that's probably why Elysium cut combat entirely, because seriously, it's the talking parts that people like about this game, the fighting stuff just isn't really that interesting. Or at least as interesting, I guess. There's probably somebody out there that loves it, but they aren't the majority, let's just say. And number three is Among Us. Oh my god, we're talking about Among Us. Amugas, Amagas. Please do not leave any angry comments. Just take a moment to think about this one because it actually fits pretty well, I think. Honestly, any social deduction or trader game would fit, but Among Us is the most popular, so it's gonna be the one that we use. Among Us doesn't really fit the traditional idea of a game that would normally be on a list like this, but it fits because you can literally talk your way out of anything. The difference here is that because it's a multiplayer game rather than a single player story, your dialogue choices aren't just binary right and wrong options. It requires requires actual cleverness and charisma to talk your way out of something. We've all seen it, like when a traitor does something and gets caught, only for them to somehow convince everyone that it was someone else. Uh, it's a game that requires real life charisma rather than a charisma stat to talk your way out, but it still counts. If anything, it's even more impressive when you do it in Among Us because you're not just like picking the right option out of a list on a predetermined like right and wrong thing. You're actually interacting with other people and using your social skills to talk your way out of something. And number two is Arcanium, a classic RPGs, and uh, in a lot of ways the true successor to the original Fallout games, even more so than the actual sequels, because above all else, Arcanium is about player choice. Set in a fantasy world in the middle of an industrial revolution, Arcanium lets you build your character with technology or with magic. That's the main focus, uh, but there's a lot of other ways to build your character too. If you want to be a total diplomat, you can be, and the game lets you bypass huge sections of the story if you say the right things at the right times. Like Fallout, this is a game where where even the final boss can be talked down, but that's hardly the only time you can talk your way out of a situation. There's still moments where combat's inevitable, but almost every situation in the game can be resolved through dialogue. That's not always easy. Sometimes you can 
really have to pay attention to find the right clues, resolve things, but it's all the more rewarding when you actually get things right. Now, the visuals were pretty dated back in 2001 when the game came out, and even with a fan patch, the game can be kind of a buggy mess, but if you want a game that gives you a lot of options to talk your way out of a tough situation, this is one of the best. And finally, at number one, it's Age of Decadence, a brilliant indie game that can be a little intimidating, but if you want an RPG that's huge and rewards players who like to talk their way out of stuff, this is where you gotta go. In most RPGs, the path of least resistance is typically combat. If you want to talk your way out of a situation, it can often be a little tricky to pull off. In this game, however, talking is the preferred option, because combat is really hard, like super tough. Even against a single opponent, your chances of death are super high, and any injury you get can be debilitating, so inverse to pretty much every other RPG in existence, this game recommends you play a character with a lot of social skills over combat on your first playthrough, because it's actually way easier. Like, in terms of difficulty, you'd much rather be a diplomat than a warrior, which sounds crazy in a video game, but hey, think about real life. Is it easier to get punched in the face and then beat the other guy? Or is it easier to not get punched in the face because you didn't say something that got you punched in the face? Like, when you think about it, it makes sense. It's more realistic than other RPGs. I would definitely rather talk my way out of a problem then get into a sword fight. Like, I'm good at talking. Like, you listen to me talk a lot of the week, right? There's a reason why this is my job. My sword fighting skills leave a little bit to be desired, though. You can easily play this game for dozens of hours without using a weapon choice, and unlike certain other games on this list, there still is combat. It's just something you can avoid if you want to. This is a game that has flown under the radar for a very long time, but as far as games that let you talk your way out of anything, there's nothing else quite like Age of Decadence. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.